Hello, everybody. This is Fred Cohen and Adam Gordon again for the OSG We Help Grow Cybersecurity Company's weekly podcast. Welcome, Fred. All right, hang on a second. You said this is Fred Cohen and Adam Gordon, but when you said this is, the first thing you said was Fred Cohen. You should have said this is Adam Gordon. Okay. This and is we Adam also Gordon. have Fred Cohen. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying you could be confusing. Somebody could confuse you with me and spend the rest of this recording believing that you were me and I was you. That's certainly possible. Um, oh, come on. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no way anybody would. <laughs> exactly. My point exactly. <laughs> okay, and I just love tab browsing. You can see on your screen I have all these tabs open. and, and uh, Yes. My goodness, what a good advertisement for all the people on all those other tabs. <laughs> um, but, but moving right along. So Adam, what are we doing here today? What, what's the deal? So I brought Karen in because she is rather brilliant at doing a particular task that a lot of companies actually don't realize they need. Um, and we're going to show some examples of why this is a good thing. Okay, when you say you're going to bring Karen in, you haven't introduced Karen and, and she hasn't even said hello. Let's bring That's her right. in. So Karen, please say hello. Hi, I'm Karen Hebert. Hi, Fred. Hello, Adam. And just in the name of complete transparency, Karen is my business partner and my life partner. And we've been together about 15 years now. So um, that's our relationship. And we also run the OYA group together. Um, I do the words and Karen does the pictures. And the way, that way we have like a complete brain between the two of us. And it, that actually works out really well. So she's the right brain and you're the wrong brain, right? Oh, that, yes. I'm definitely wrong brain. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Just saying, you know, that's yeah. a, I'm married too. You know, I know how this works. <laughs> yes. And so um, Karen is the one who actually came up with the name, the, the Oya Group. And what she does is a particular thing in companies. And a lot of companies don't realize the value of this uh, until they actually have the experience. So we're going to talk a little bit today about bringing concepts into reality because that's what she does. And um, so Fred, if you could go to a site called um, atreka.com, A-T. I don't know if I can do that, but I did think I would go to Oya Group. Because oh, okay. There's, there's our site. So this is really what we do. It's the, I do the strategic part. Karen does the, creative part, and we do power, powerly persuasive marketing. We've got over a billion dollars in exits, and what we do is basically help companies figure out how to realize their vision and how to communicate it in a way that's really effective and brings, brings them uh, companies faster, gets them acquired faster, and generally what we do is companies- Okay, companies okay, enough advertising. So bigger, let's, faster. Get, let's get to the criticism here. I know right. strategic is hard to read because it's largely white on white. Right. Right. And creative and, has the same problem under if. So it really looks like Egypt and create. Yes. Which is actually part of our strategy. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. The, so like the cobbler shoes, our website needs a little bit of tuning and that's not because it's not realizing our vision, just because we've been too busy to actually focus on it. <laughs> what do you mean you have too much work to be able to work on your own site? Exactly. God, exactly. it must be terrible to have too much to do. It's terrible. So are, you, are you looking to hire? Uh, well, not this week, but you know, maybe soon. Who knows? All right. So you wanted me to go to some other site. Yes. Yeah, not so, your site and not so, our site. And not our site. Well, and what we're site gonna, is we're gonna sh We're going to show you why what Karen does is so great. All right, show me, what do I point to So there? you're going to atreka, A-T-R-E-C-A dot com. So this is a site, this company oh. has been with us since um, they were five people. Oh, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> this is cool. All right, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> And this graphic is particular to the company. This is part of their output, actually. So, no, obviously, it pops. Yes, and it's actually, it's, it's really amazing what, the, what these guys do. But the point is here, not that they're amazing, but that they started with us when they were five people and a maybe technology, and they went public this year. Uh, well, whatever they went public at. 
but it was good. It was good for everybody. And uh, they're all now hiking in Machu Picchu, I think, um, which is great. So you mean that they're no longer saving lives? They've, now they've taken the money and that's it? Uh, no, I, I think they're just vacationing down there. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So, so who did this graphics? Um, so these graphics are done by a, there's companies out there that do these kind of medical graphics specifically, um, which, I mean, they're very cool. And these would be part of a uh, longer video that we're actually producing for them that talks about how their particular technology works and what it all is. Um, the point here being, though, that this was um, a vision that the CEO had. And he was having trouble um, executing it. Um, you know, he had brought in his own graphics person and they were working it out, but it was not going very well. And what we discovered is that CEOs don't speak graphic. And that's where Karen came in and was actually able to realize his vision. And so uh, what I brought Karen in to talk about was how she did that and how, she, how her process works that enables her so, to do it. So, so you say you brought her in to talk about it, but we're seven, almost eight minutes in, and she hasn't hardly said anything. I mean, that, that, was, that was the segue that was going to allow her to speak. Uh, okay, I see. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, as, as Adam was saying, I think that a lot of uh, CEOs and leaders of companies have gotten there because they know what they're doing in their particular space. Uh, this particular CEO, he's a scientist. Um, he's also, I, I think scientists and engineers are actually quite creative. And so they, they definitely have a vision that they want to portray, but they really obviously don't know how to do it themselves. And they need somebody to talk to and kind of change that vision and that narrative, that story that they're trying to tell into some kind of visual that's going to create uh, an emotion. Um, for example, Fred, as you saw this, you went, wow, that's cool. Uh, that's great. That's the uh, attention that we want to try to capture at this stage on this particular website and invite somebody else to, you know, go forward and, um, you know, find out some more information, go deeper into the site. That is what creating the graphics is all about. Um, it's taking the messaging and so on that Adam uh, work so hard on and the vision of the of the leader of the company and kind of the, you know creating visuals that then um, peak interest and that's a lot of what we do it's either trying to peak interest and create an emotion so that somebody goes further or it's trying to capture very highly complex um, technology if you will and deciphering it down to something that lay people can understand. So this is, you know, obviously when you're looking at, you know, biomedical world today, mm -hmm. there are these amazing, you know, this, this could be a picture. Obviously it's not actually a picture of what happens inside your body. Mm -hmm. And this looks like a cell on the edge of a cell and a, and a bad thing or a good thing coming up against the cell and so forth. And, Mm -hmm. And this looks like a higher hierarchical thing, which is a diagram of some sort of technology. Yes. But two two questions. One of them, obviously, this isn't real. So is this actually reflecting something real? And the coloring is 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 in order to differentiate things, or is this um, just a, a beautiful piece of graphic imagery that meets what our minds think of? It is uh, a representation, it's a 3D representation of something that if you look through a microscope, uh, you would see these are antibodies that are attacking cancer cells in some of these. So um, right. when you say it's a 3D, it's actually 2D, right? Uh, actually, this is probably a 3D graphic that then is in a 2D format, yes. And okay. that particular graphic that you see that's technology is a um, yeah, the technology, I, I know that one, but these, yeah. you wouldn't actually see this because coloring is not the same, right? That's so, correct. That's yeah. correct. That is there for effect. Yeah. But the, 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 general, the general shapes are as close as they can get, um, which is pretty close these days. So yeah, to actual shapes. Yeah. Exactly. This is, this is actually a T cell attacking a cancer cell. Yeah, oh, there you go. And the reason it's called a T cell is because it looks like a T. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Assuming we look from this angle. So, because uh, it would look like an eye if you rotated at 90 degrees, but that's so different. So, the, <laughs> the other question I had was, was so 
All right. So, so just by the way, right. So for those of us that are, you know, on the extreme other side of the brain, mm -hmm. um, the notion of putting these colors in, it really makes it pop. It makes it interesting and exciting and wow. Yes. And, but at the same time, you know, did the scientist in charge say, that's not actually red and purple and green <laughs> or anything like that? <laughs> no. Uh, no, actually, the scientists were absolutely involved in helping to select these particular items. So for them, it, abs it, it reflected what they understood and they were trying to convey. But the colors, what do they think of the colors? Uh, they like that it popped. <laughs> I mean, really, it can there you be. Go. Okay. Absolutely. So, the, so they were able to suspend their view that things have to be realistic. Well, if, if, way, the if these were always if, allowed if, to be non colored. So, so yeah, if, if these were realistic, I'm sure they would not be very interesting to look at. <laughs> well, they'd be interesting, but not in the same way. Exactly. So the cancer obviously is that that evil looking silver black and white thing, but the color thing is the good guy, right? Right, exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. So now let's so, talk about cybersecurity, because this isn't cybersecurity. The thing about cybersecurity is it really looks boring. Yes. I mean, well we're seriously so, boring. So here's another site I'd like you to go to, Fred. The next one is code42.com. And it's code and the number four and two. Dot com. Okay, code 42. Software so, ain't us. Code 42. Dude. Oh, I'm silencing myself. Why do they always <laughs> silence themselves? This should be a man silencing. Got See, real now, this, is, this is interesting because you have a different website than I do. For code42.com. Yeah. My, my website, here, let me share my screen. And I'll show you what I see. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen. You can share your screen. Okay. I believe she's wearing an eye watch. <laughs> when I'm in the eye watch, I can tell her actual dimensions, her actual body dimension. <laughs> so it seems that she's not a very big person. She's a small person. Uh, oh, my hey, goodness. Really, that's what you see? That's what I see. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, probably that's one I can click through because I haven't yet agreed to their website cookie thing. No, I, oh, maybe. Um, oh, no, you have seen is, a lot of me yours. Okay, so, so we got just different things for who knows why. Yeah, different browsers, different OSs, who knows. Um, but the thing is, is that if we look at both of them and um, in a second, Fred, I'll just have you bring yours back up and just reshare your screen. So, when you look at this just from a communications perspective and what they're doing here, it's basically the same answer. Yours just happens to have a picture in it and things are slightly reorganized. But well, their there's answer a here was basically don't, don't do any design. That was basically the design here. It's like simple, easy, and they do a good job of it. They, they deliver their message, right? And Yeah, this, this is to my liking. I mean, yeah. because, because it does say, first of all, that companies up in the top left hand corner and it says it's simple fast detection and response from to data loss from insider threats right so i think i think we can understand if we have insider threats although i would not say threats myself but but if we have insiders and we're worried about losing data it's really not data loss and stuff but what but one way the other the point is simple fast detect and respond to insiders doing bad things okay got yeah. it if i'm interested i'm going to look further Right? Yeah, I'm going to jump in and say, uh, even though both you and Adam experienced this as, as no design, I will argue, in fact, that there is a um, extensive amount of design and thought that has, that has gone into this particular layout. We as designers don't just design pretty pictures. It's also a selection of what the fonts are, um, okay. how right. I was going to talk about font selection next, so we'll get to that. Yeah, so that's that's to us that's graphic. How this is yeah, laid out, how it's this put does on the not page. look to me like a very good font. Well, it certainly got you guys to read it. You well, actually, it's sort of too high and not wide enough to read. <laughs> so I actually misread it. <laughs> but, but it did its job. But we're old guys, Fred, so yeah, we don't yeah, count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm making the argument that it's it, it is as effective potentially as the other. 
Yeah, well, it's sans serif, which is really important. Yeah. Right? And it's large and it's bold and it's high contrast. So you can actually see what it says, which is a big plus. (laughs) Absolutely. See? There you go. And then it has has a call to action. Mm -hmm. A big orange button. Right. Yeah. Could be bigger. So, So tell me, why not make that orange button like three times as big and the font huge? Or is that just going to distract from the texture? How do you determine like the ratios of these things? Well, you're, well, there's a number of different ways. We're trying to figure out a hierarchy um, of the information. We want you to read the text first. Uh, the subtext right underneath that, again, is just supportive of that. And then the next thing in hierarchy really is the orange button. And what we're using there is not so much size on the big orange button, but the color. And that yeah, is what's called to action. Right. Exactly. Push this button to do something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And notice also that it is the same color that is in the logo. So not only are we using uh, that particular color to draw attention, we are connecting it to the brand overall. And you yeah, notice it's also, it's yeah. also in what Karen's saying, it's here, it's here, it's also here. So they actually carry it down the page to kind of draw your eye down, right down to this I agree button. So you're yeah, supposed yeah, to take I your don't cookies. agree, but that's a different. <laughs> that's a different I don't subject. agree to the I agree button. <laughs> I agree with what you're saying. And so, Fred, if we made that orange button three times the size, what would happen is your eye would immediately get drawn to that first. And what they want you to do is read the text first because they don't want you to request a demo if you don't know what you're asking for because that wastes their time too. Hey, I thought thought Karen was the expert here. She is, but (laughs) some of it has rubbed off on me over the years. Well, being, yeah, being around both of us, I think, you know, sometimes creative is strategic and sometimes, you know, strategic work is very creative. So I think I have the same problem. My my, my wife's a psychologist and and sometimes I think I know about how people think. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Okay. So now I've got another completely different site I'm going to show you. No, wait, before you do that, we need to go back to mine. Okay. To my difference. All right. You know, because because that's how that is, and I also had an interesting comment about that. So, um, I I actually I'm not sure this is actually better than the other one. No, it's a, well. Remember, I said at the beginning, this is essentially the same thing. All they've done is dropped a a um, a piece of stock art in here. Well, slightly different words. Yes. But, but the problem with this particular piece of art is it actually distracts from that message. Yep. You look at her first, and then you look back to see what's going on. Employees quit. And by the way, it's starting, you know, make sure your trade cir- secrets don't go with them. It's, it's, um, it's touchy on getting to that seven-second issue, right? Yeah, it is. It's more like the eight to ten mm-hmm. seconds for cognition. Right. Right, because your eye is naturally going to be drawn to a picture, and so they've put it off in, you know, the cold spot on the screen, hoping that it's not going to do what it does, I think. No, it pulls you to the right, and you have to go back to the left, which is even harder. Right, and Karen, your thoughts on this? Well, my thoughts are probably slightly different. I think that it did its job in creating an immediate uh, blink moment, the immediate response to see... Uh, the emotion that's happening out of that person, and then you're going back to kind of, uh, you know, validate the information. And so, uh, you know, the other thing that they might be doing, and I don't know this for a fact, is that they might be doing A-B testing on both of these two sites and to see what gets more Uh, click-throughs. So there might be a strategy as well as a graphic. um, Uh Aha. How clever. There you go. Right. So, so you I'm just going to, I'm on my browser, I'm just going to hit refresh right now and see if I get a different page. Well, while you're doing that, I just wanted to point something out. Make sure your trade secrets don't go with them. Employees quit. It turns out, you know, just within the last couple of days, I've been talking to attorneys about a legal matter where an employee, actually two employees left and took some of the trade secrets with them. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm an expert witness. I really can't judge until I see the facts. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I don't generally draw legal conclusions. But, but it, it rung true specifically to me because I know that this is a real thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and clearly, everybody knows that employees quit, right? Uh, sure. By the way, they also get fired and are disgruntled and do something too. <laughs> but, but employees definitely quit. And, and making sure your trade secrets don't go with them 
is an interesting concept, but I'd be willing to bet that the technology doesn't actually do that. I, I would wonder. One would wonder how exactly they would do that unless they have, you know, some character somewhere has that forgetting stone and he can make you forget various bits of your life. No, I was, I was thinking that maybe they had an assassin. When they yeah. quit, they go for good. Yeah. <laughs> really, no, 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 nobody, nobody goes. Nobody goes. It's the yeah, or, you know what? There was a movie, uh, one of the movies with the, uh, oh, the, the British uh, something men, uh, I don't remember the name of the movie, but they had an explosive device that the bad guys put in people's heads that they could just blow them up. Right. <laughs> they were just killed. <laughs> um, right. And, and by the, the way, that know, would the... justify the image on the right <laughs> <laughs> Or the... Oh, my God, what? oh I'm not going to talk. I swear I'm not going to talk. <laughs> Or the eternal sunshine of the or the the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, you know, where they just have you forget your last breakup, um, you know, just remove that part of your memory. <laughs> right. So, so, so this is one of my problems with cybersecurity is exaggeration. Yeah. Um, however, just to be clear, make sure that's about increasing the certainty, higher surety. Mm -hmm. So it it does it doesn't really claim perfection. Right? right, but it's just a little bit over the harshness level for me in its claim here, but not so far over that I wouldn't possibly use it for a client. I wouldn't use yeah. it myself, but yeah. And and you know, fear is the the pretty much the leg that cybersecurity marketing stands on. Most of it is all sorts of fear based, and you know that's valid. It's one of the tools in a typical marketer's or brander's tool case, no doubt. Um, and I would think everybody would kind of get bored of it. Um, and well, so you know, there, there are problems with selling fear. And one of them is if you're successful and you make them afraid, then they might decide to kill the messenger. And that's the person who made them afraid. Right. Um, which is they, So they'll buy from somebody else. Um, I personally, in the cybersecurity arena, prefer a different set of messaging. Right. So what? So as a cybersecurity expert, Fred, what kind of messaging do you prefer? Well, let, let's just a little bit of clarity first. Sure. Um, it might be that fear actually sells more, which might be why they're doing the A-B testing. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's, yes, it could be. So, so, so your warning comes that if you're going to do this properly, you do need to test the options out. It's not just a, a simple matter of somebody finds a clever idea and you pick it. You, you got to test it. But yes. But Typically, the, you know, we, we it, it fundamentally it comes from the notion of risk management, which cybersecurity people believe to mean that you should always reduce or minimize or get rid of risk or mm -hmm. avoid risk. Right? You avoid it, transfer it, mitigate it. And Not the only. fourth option is accept risk. Mm -hmm. and, and so part of the problem here is you have to sell this into a business. And, and the business person, whoever's running the business, and hopefully the people that work for them at, at least some levels of management understand that business is about taking risks for rewards. It's not about not taking risk. It's about taking risk. And cybersecurity people are always trying to stop them from taking the risk. They're trying to impede the progress of employees and, and legitimate workers in order to impede bad guys. Mm -hmm. So this combination of making us less efficient at our work and and you know creating havoc right i mean they're they're actually causing failures operational failures as part of security if it's done poorly mm -hmm. so so i believe the right sale at least to executive management who ultimately probably should be the buyer if they're not is um that you know we take risks for, for rewards the question is which risks should we take for which rewards so security technology, this stuff, is an enabler. It allows us to do things which we wouldn't dare do otherwise, right? Right. So, so for example, you know, if we can, it's not that the employees will take the trade secrets with them. Of course, it'll be in their brain, right? Right. But there's an awareness issue of making certain that they understand the implications of sharing these trade secrets. So there's an educational aspect to it. There's also a legal requirement for protection and contractual requirements. 
and 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 so there are all these other you know technical and non-technical and human things that you need to do and so really you know the thing to sell is you know look you're going to have trade secrets and they're extremely valuable because they make you win against the competition mm -hmm. the question is are you going to not keep those advantages as long right or are you going to find a way to have more and more valuable trade secrets made more readily available to more of your workers, making it more efficient, more cost effective, and, and improve the quality of your ability to do things by making sure that when you do that, you're not increasing the risks beyond the tolerable point. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, you can take risks. You can allow that employee to have access to this. And I'll give you a really good example of this. We did a, a study some years ago for a major department of the United States government that had classified information. And, um, and this was before the 9-11 conclusions of need to share, okay? okay. So the problem is there's this concept of need to know, which is to say, you can only know something, you can only get access to something um, if you need the access in order to do your job. So there, there turns out there are two criteria. One of them is that you have an adequate clearance for the for the uh, security level of the information. And the second one is for the government's purpose, in the case of government clearances, for the government's purpose, in order to do your job, you need to have that access. That's called need to know. Mm -hmm. So what was happening was that people were making need to know decisions not based on those criteria, because they didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. They thought, oh my God, I'm putting this extremely valuable, critically important, deadly thing into the hands of this person over here, and 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 I got I have to personally make certain of this or that, or do I really trust them? And it, it actually made people sick and caused the the organization to grind nearly to a halt, where they couldn't accomplish their mission. Mm. And so, you know, what we did was we figured this out, and we sort of retrained everybody and explained and and helped make the systems automate a large part of the process so that. We took that emotional thing, we took that decision-making out and, and made it follow the actual rules that they were supposed to follow, the, the actual duties that they had instead of some other thing that they thought of. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that wasn't expensive. It wasn't time-consuming. The organization was able to operate a lot more efficiently and more effectively and get its job done, accomplish its mission. Mm -hmm. And so that's a case, you know, and, and there are lots of these cases, right? Sure. So... And, and it's the same sort of thing. It, it's about figuring out the right way to do it. Now, having said that, clearly technology to support that is very important in low surety environments, right? So if you have a bunch of PCs and, and you're connected to the internet and they're you know, running, you know, God knows what, you know, Microsoft Word and, and uh, Microsoft Lookout. Oh, I'm sorry, Outlook, email. <laughs> Then, then, you know, you're going to get Trojan horses and people are going to spam you and you're going to get, what do they call it, phishing. And, phishing. and, uh, and, and they, they now have a targeted version of phishing, whatever they call it. Super, I don't know, whatever the phishing Spear is. Spear phishing. Spear phishing, there it is. Right. And, which is, it's all just, you know, deception, right? People yep. are using deception against you. Yep. And so, so you can counter the deception by training the people, but you can also counter the deception by having technology that makes sure that, this information doesn't get to there or detects the attempt to get it to there and stops it in most cases. Right. Or, and, and so that's really what I think this technology is. So having that technology reduces the burden on other aspects of the program. And generally you want to have redundancy if it's important enough to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. so, so, so there's probably a lot of value here. Probably, probably. And, so one of the interesting things that you just talked about, and uh, I agree, there probably is a lot of value here, um, and that's not how cybersecurity, the cybersecurity industry communicates its values, is by saying these are our values. What they do is they create this environment of fear. And so what you're saying, Fred, is that actually finds its way into companies as well. And actually, you know, fear is the deer in the headlights, right? It puts everybody in that moment where they don't know what's going on and they don't know how to comply anymore, so they're frozen. Yeah, so what, what's supposed to happen, if you do the fear thing right, 
the thing that causes action, right? Because you're trying to get over the action threshold. The thing that causes action is fear and resolution. It's not that you keep building up fear. fear it's right. that you're afraid, but here's a way I can stop being afraid. Right. So, so too much fear and not enough resolution in some cases. Again, yes. this one looks pretty good, comparatively speaking, right? And, and so that's actually a really interesting point is that, you know, uh, I think this, as an industry, cybersecurity does a great job of doing the first part of that, of instilling fear. Um, but as an industry, what they're also not doing is turning that off after the sale is made. So they're not communicating, educating the employees, whatever it is that that's going to take to say, this was a thing that you should have been afraid of, but now you don't have to be afraid of it anymore. So, so interesting that you said that because I just clicked on the yes, save me button. And, and Karen, I think you're going to agree that this is very nice and easy to read. Is that right? Yes. But clearly the message they, is not, sorry, go ahead. Uh, clearly they, they want you to read the content and kind of follow through in a very systematic way. Yeah. The problem is that the last one was fear. They got me to act, right? So I got over the action threshold on my action was I clicked on the thing for the solution. And what they did was they said, no, be more afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and so what it should have said here, it said protect it. Yeah, but it didn't say how. Right. And then it has some sort of story down here, a use case, right. blah, 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 on all this graphic stuff. It should say, you know, $5 a month, click here, you're safe. <laughs> or something, whatever it should say. <laughs> or should contact us and we'll make you safe. Something exactly. like that. And I, and I agree. I agree with you, Fred. And this is where, you know, sometimes companies don't necessarily do it all the right way. Uh, but you clicked on something and you were potentially ready to buy and what they've done is they forced you to read more stuff. They just poured sand into the sales <laughs> funnel. And so, you know, interestingly enough, I would I love, love to find out the an, I'd love to can, see the analytics can, as to how this is working for them because can, I agree. can we get a graphic on that? Somebody pouring sand yeah. into the sales funnel? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that would be fantastic for our site. Yes. You know, don't pour sand into your sales funnel. <laughs> call the call oh, you know, the call OSG. OSG. <laughs> we'll help you. Yeah, and here's a phone number, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look here to contact. Right? I mean, to me, that's so, – so part of it is I think people in marketing and, and, and want to make things convoluted, complex, make lots of different imagery and so forth. By the way, Karen, I should ask you, so this <laughs> color scheme, I like this – I love this blue and white color scheme. It's a wonderful color scheme. And I guess they're carrying through the same code 42, that same blue there. Uh, yeah, that would be my guess. It's a version. But they've that. abandoned the orange. Uh, no, no, they haven't. No, down in the right corner. Now, what they're using the orange for is they're using the orange for places to call your attention and call to action. So these are things that are generally clickable, or they, they're using it as an accent piece and not as an overall color. And that's a very, very specific strategy. So like if in the lower right-hand corner, you've got the agree button, you've got the find out now yeah, button. Okay. In the lower right-hand corner, you've got the chat button. But so they kind of messed it up with clear. the screen, I think, back here. That's kind of overusing it, don't you think? Well, you know, not everybody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's try it a different way. Everybody's not perfect. <laughs> everybody's not perfect. <laughs> everybody's not perfect. <laughs> and one of the things that I will say is having done this for many, many years is that it's not always, it's, it's rarely actually the marketers who want to make things more complex. It's the engineers. So in a technology company, more often than not, the engineers want to give you the tome of what their lovely software does for you. And sometimes the challenge for the, for the marketers and the branders is to figure out how to make them happy. Uh, as well as their audience who wants to read stuff, as well as to find a way to do calls to action on the website and make it visually appealing. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that isn't always as simple as, gee, does this look good and does it get me what I want? Okay, so now I've got the engineer and the brander. So you guys need to <laughs> standing eight count here, all right? <laughs> the engineer and the brander. Boy, that sounds like it could be a series. It could. An engineer and a brander <laughs> like, go into like a bar. It's like gun smoke. <laughs> yeah. An engineer and a brander go into a bar. What happens? We have to figure no, out. No, no, it's not go into a bar. It's walk into a bar. Walk in. Okay. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. Why is that? I'll get to it in a second. But 
I just want to note here, last year, 40 million people changed jobs and 60% of them took data with them when they quit. Okay, let's be clear. 100% took data with them when they quit <laughs> in their brain because you can't help it. Yes. If you actually did any work there, oh, maybe they're saying 40% of them never did any work there, so now it's not that <laughs> got into their brain, but okay. So that's thing one. So it's clearly wrong on that count. But the other side, they seem to be claiming that 60% of them took data that is nefariously took, took things they shouldn't have taken with them. Right. Yes. And did something with it. And I don't buy into that either. I think that's a bad statistic. Well, one of my favorite quotes in the world is never assume malice where incompetence will do. Uh, I, and I actually like that one too. Yeah. Very so Fred, we're running uh, into about 37 minutes here. So I think it's time to wrap up this session. Oh, but wait, there was, what did you ask? I was going to comment about something else before I, I went rogue here on my quote. <laughs> Pack a bag. We're going on a tangent. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're signing off for the week. Join us next week. Fred Cohen, Adam Gordon, OSG. We help grow cybersecurity okay. companies. Uh -huh.